Coming up on this episode of Bro, Do You Even Talk Pinball? We're going to interview Doug Polka, who is the Pinberg Papa Tournament Director. We're going to have some awesome Q&A from our viewers and listeners, and we're going to have the latest news and updates in the pinball world. All that and more, coming right up. So the words right out of my mouth. What's up, pinball <laughs> players? It's uh, Thursday, February 28th. Welcome. Kevin, how you doing? I'm doing great. Awesome. How are things in your world? Thanks for asking. Finally. <laughs> it's been like three years. Finally asked me how things are going. It's I never cared until pretty, now. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty good. Really excited because we got Doug Polka on. So we've been wanting to have Doug on for quite some time. We can ask him all about... Uh, uh, Pinberg and stuff, but also Papa, which is you know even even larger in that sense. He's been playing hard to get, but we finally got we grabbed him. That's right, that's <laughs> right. So let's uh let's jump into it by first thanking our partners who make this possible. Kevin, take it away. All right, Comet Pinball. Visit CometPinball.com for all your LED needs. Make your games look great, nice and bright. Uh, color match your inserts, make them look good. Uh, Double Danger, DDPinball.com. Use coupon code Buffalo to save fifteen percent <clears throat> on pinball swag, merch, shirts, hoodies. Hats, pins, all, all your all your good looking pinball wares you can pick up at Double Danger. Uh, the Mod Couple, one of our newer uh, newer sp- sponsors, themodcouplepinball.com. They've got a modded monkey, Jack the Monkey, you can put in your Pirates of the Caribbean pinball machine. And I do. Yeah, Kevin's got it. I got Jack the He's monkey. rubbing it in every time. I do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they also have a Kraken mod that I'm thinking about getting, so good stuff there. Uh, lots of mods for lots of other games, too, uh, but check them out, themodcouplepinball.com. Uh, new sponsor, Flippin' Out Pinball. Yeah. Flip N, as in Nick, outpinball.com. That is uh, Zach Many just purchased that company, so you can buy pinball machines from him. And I, I hear he does a good job and takes care of his customers, so check it out. If you're in the market for a pinball machine, whether it's a Stern or even Jersey Jack, uh, you can go to flipnoutpinball.com. Uh, Jersey Jack Pinball, makers of Hobbit, Wizard of Oz, Dialed In, and the aforementioned Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, check them out, jerseyjackpinball.com. Yeah, buy, buy it from Zach because Pirates, is they're stopping production Ooh, yeah. in March. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. I mean, they'll probably run it again. We don't know when. Yeah. So there you go. Greatest game of all time. With some urgency. You heard it here first. Yeah. Uh, pinballraffle.org, uh, supporting Pinball EDU. Uh, you can get in on their monthly raffle to win a pinball machine. Visit pinballraffle.org, supporting Joe Saeed's uh, Spinners Pinball Education Center. Uh, he's a certified autism specialist, so he does a great job out there. Yep. Uh, Community Beer Works. Community Beer Works. Community Beer Works is a uh, brewery in Buffalo, New York, brewing delicious brews, beers. We've got a charity tournament coming up on March 10th. Mm-hmm. It's for the Read with Reed Foundation. And uh, come out for that. They've got eight pinball machines there now, including the brand new Munsters. Awesome. Yep. And Pin Stadium, pinstadium.com. Save 10% with coupon code Buffalo and. Today, we're giving away a set of Penn Stadium lights for our live viewers. So uh, hang in there for the, the stream tonight. And at some point, we're going to run a raffle and you could win. Here's the best part. People blank out and they walk away uh, mm-hmm. when we're doing these partner ads. They uh-huh. miss that. They're, you're going to miss it. So you're going to miss it. <laughs> we're going to do it at the end of the show. Uh-huh. So there you go. People who stuck around, they're going to get a yeah. chance to win a, a full Penn Stadium lighting kit, which is uh, let's value it at like three hundred dollars, yep. something ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, there you go. That's the really good, generous uh, giveaway Amazing. That we're doing tonight. Amazing giveaway. Thank uh, you, Penn Stadium. Penn Stadium lighting kits, full, complete lighting kits that you can tr- control with your your phone, an app on your phone. Really great product there. Check them out. Pinball Arcade hosting us tonight. Our friends over at Pinball Arcade, virtual recreations of real pinball machines. Check them out. Pinballarcade.com. Pinballmix.com. Get a remix soundtrack for your pinball machine. Save ten percent with. Coupon code Buffalo and get a free Easter egg. And you've got your uh, Tron pinball mix coming up soon, right? It's on the way. We're going to stream that yeah. too when it gets done. It's going to be hot. I mean, it probably won't be as good as the Metallica Collective Soul it's, mix, but you know what it, is. It's got a high standard to live up to. <laughs> it there. does. And uh, certainly, la- last but certainly not least, Titan Pinball, titanpinball.com. Save 10% to use coupon code when you use coupon code Buffalo on your 
silicone rigs to replace the rubber rings in your pinball machine. They look great. You can get awesome colors. Uh, they clean up great and hold up great. So check them out, titanpinball.com. All right, before we bring Doug on, I just want to say I know not everybody is into competitive pinball and hearing about competitive pinball. And certainly, you know, Papa represents a lot of that in competitive pinball. They're not exclusive to competitive pinball. But my argument today that you should still listen, even if you never play in a tournament, never will play in a tournament, is because competitive pinball has a huge effect on pinball in general. Um, case in point, I was just thinking about this today. Look at one of, one of the games that is nominated for Game of the Year and will most likely win because most people have played this is Iron Maiden. Mm-hmm. And who made Iron Maiden? Uh, you competitive know competitive pinball player. Arguably the best pinball player in the world. <laughs> Design Iron Maiden. Yep. Who is arguably the best person doing rules today in pinball. Mm-hmm. Lyman Sheets. Also Lyman a Sheets, competitive a competitive player. top player in the world for decades now. Keith um, Johnson as well. Keith Johnson. Yep. Some of the best rules in pinball. I think Pirates has the best rules ever made in a pinball machine. Top pinball player. Top competitive pinball player. So you see the influence of competitive pinball and what it has on pinball even if you don't play and uh, we'll get into more of that with doug so let's welcome him on board doug welcome aboard how's it going guys thanks for having me yeah thanks for coming on thank you for joining us so to touch on nick's nick's point about competitive pinball influencing everything i'm gonna hijack the interview right away no i I was Um, gonna ask you about that so i'm gonna jump into it so what Nick said, 100% true. Um, everything competitive pinball trickles down through the rest of the hobby um, and, honestly, the rest of the industry. I mean, with um, the three-play effects, we've just begun to touch on, for example, we we brought in eBay as a sponsor last year. Uh, that's a billion-dollar company that we brought in as a sponsor that's going to raise awareness of what we're doing. Um, we also recently had a big announcement this week where we're – uh, partnering with the Pittsburgh Knights, which is an esports team out of Pittsburgh, whose other partners include like the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Steelers. Wow. I mean, and they're going to bring us a lot of attention too. And all of that is going to funnel down into pinball in some sense. When when the big advertisers and stuff tar- start taking notice of these competitions, it's also good for the hobby because it gets more people interested in general, maybe brings more fit manufacturers, maybe get brings more talent to the table. It puts more money into the industry, which is good for everybody. Agreed. Agreed. Raises the visibility of, of pinball, gets more people playing. More people playing means more people buying pinball. More people playing pinball in location means that more machines are going to get made, more companies yep. are going to want to jump in and make pinball machines because it's profitable. So it's a win-win for everybody. And more people watching the bro show. Absolutely. That's right. That's what, in that's, the end. Where Kevin and I make our millions. <laughs> that's the master plan. Yes. <laughs> Eventually, it's coming. The pinball money's coming. Did we officially introduce Doug? You know, we did, we did not because he he jumped in, and I'm glad he did because I, that's I that's so important of, of of looping in the how competitive pinball influences pinball in general. But here's the introduction to Doug. So Doug has been with uh, Pinberg Papa Replay F, uh, Foundation for over ten years. Uh, he's been the tournament director, so if you've been to Pinburg and you had a head of ruling, he's, you know, reigns down on a lot of it. Um, he is the co-owner of Kickback Pinball Cafe that's in Pittsburgh. It's one of my favorite places to play pinball. It's absolutely fantastic. Check it out. And he's been an operator who's routed games for years. So how'd I do? Uh, that was fantastic. Pretty, pretty, pretty thorough. Five of the points in. So uh, I mean, we could go on and on with all of my accomplishments, but we, we should some- really. And we will over the yeah. course of this interview. I, I'm, I'm curious, though. So people can can understand sort of you better how did you get into pinball where did where did this start uh so i think my story is very similar to other people in that uh i played a lot in high school and that was like the 90s uh the you know the bally williams dot matrix games are the games i basically cut my teeth on and as you know i went off to school and got uh adulting and all that good stuff you know stepped away from it for a while pinball kind of faded in general in in the pop culture Uh, zeitgeist and then uh one of my friends who i actually met through playing poker um al tomka who's also a competitive player local guy in pittsburgh uh i went to his house i think once to pick him up to go to a game and uh walked into his basement and he had like four games in his basement i was like no way you can like buy these things and put them in your basement and i think it was like a month and a half later that i had my first game and then it just kind of escalated from there and then uh he told me about papa uh so i walked through the doors there and you know that was pinball disneyland for me i'd never seen so many games uh and from that point on you know i tried 
being serious about competitive pinball for a while, but then I learned that I don't necessarily have the patience it takes to be a super good competitive pinball player. I want to play games quickly and I want to play them in a dangerous manner most of the time. Uh, and that's against most competitive pinball uh, rules. So I decided since I'll never be the world pinball champion, I'm going to help run the world pinball championships. And uh, so basically uh, when Mark took over down at Papa, he, because I was involved with the Pittsburgh pinball league, he, and he was part of that. He contacted me and then uh, just went from there. So you didn't have the patience to competitively play pinball, but you somehow have the patience to do everything you're doing in terms of running one of the largest tournaments, or the largest tournament in the world. He's got the patience to babysit a thousand pinball players. It's, it's nonstop. <laughs> it's, it's nonstop. It's 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 very exciting. I mean, I, it's it sounds dumb that someone would say I much prefer to run an event than play in it. Uh, not that I don't like to play pinball, but I would I actually would rather run an event than play in one. Right. As long as I don't have to score keep. I don't want to score keep. Okay, fair enough. What is, <laughs> what is Papa? So Papa is actually now a brand name under the Replay Foundation. A uh, uh, few years ago, Papa got folded. Uh, Papa used to be owned by Kevin Martin. Uh, Kevin Martin was a competitive pinball player, and he owned Pair Networks, which is one of the first um, hosting companies uh, in the world. Uh, so we like to joke with Kevin and say that he helped invent the internet with Al Gore sometimes. <laughs> um, but uh, so he owned 400 machines and he created this this thing in Pittsburgh. Uh, he built this warehouse, uh, filled it with games. And then eventually, in order for us to keep going, we decided it would be best if he turned that into a nonprofit. So basically, he donated all his games to the new entity, which was the Replay Foundation. And we are a 501c3 uh, nonprofit, um, and we promote uh, gaming culture, basically. Nice, nice. So what else, besides pinball, what do you do to, when you say promote gaming culture, what else do you guys do? So some of the things we've done besides run tournaments is we've recently started running tech classes out of Papa headquarters and the new building. Um, we put pinball out there in the public and video games. Like for example, the Pittsburgh Penguins have a nineties night coming up soon and we're taking them, I think 20 games, uh, to PPG arena for people to play for free. Um, it's just, you know, and raising the awareness of everything. And now that we're, we're partnering with, uh, the Pittsburgh Knights, uh, which we talked about a little bit earlier. I mean, we're going to get involved in esports as well. We're going to be part of that growing culture. And we just want to make sure that, you know, as gaming culture evolves and gaming culture continues to move down the road, we kind of want to make sure that we preserve some of the historical aspects of it as well, um, which is why, you know, we have almost 600 pins in our collection at Papa. And I think we're up over 400 full size arcade games. We have over 2000 console games in our collection. And it's all about not just preservation either. It's all about actually having a way for people to come and play that. And that's what replay FX is. Thank so we take this stuff and we put it out there and you pay a nominal fee and you come in and you can play until you, till you fall over from exhaustion. So it's very important that it isn't a museum. And it's something that people can go and actually participate in. I mean, there there are games we have at Replay where there are less than three of them in the world. Yeah. Um, and you can come and put your hands on them and play them. They're not behind a sheet of glass. Like, you can actually step up to them and play them. Like the amazing Tattoo Assassins. That, that game is uh, <laughs> many things. I don't know if amazing would be one of the words I would use. It is definitely I'll, rare, though. It's I'll definitely use it. rare. Fun fact, Kevin Martin helped program that game. What? That's amazing. Yeah. He's also in uh, Baywatch. Uh, he is in Baywatch as pinball. well. <laughs> well not, not, only, the, not the TV show, the pinball machine. <laughs> not but only can you play the these TV games. Show. I've never asked him about it. No. Not only can you play these games, but these games are well capped, right? You know, they're clean. They're, they're working perfectly. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing what you guys are able to pull off. Our um, techs are fantastic. Uh, big shout out to... Uh, to Ted, Dan, and Steve, who are our, our full-time techs that we have down at Papa. Those guys bust their butt to get that stuff ready year-round. So it's interesting to hear you say that, you know, you bring up eSports and you have the Pittsburgh Knights. Um, how did how did that partnership come together? Right? When they're focused on video games and you guys are doing pinball, um, how did that happen and what does that look like? 
So uh, the they had they had visited Replay FX for a few years um, as they're they're building up uh, themselves, and they had spoken with Mark Steinman, who's the director at Papa, a few times, and they talked and talked about a partnership. So uh, it just it came together just over the last. Pretty much, they started working on it after the last Replay ended, um, and they're going to bring a esports. Uh, vibe to the show and we're partnered with them for the next few years at least and then hopefully be able to use they want to use us to elevate the, them and we want to use what they do to elevate what we do oh fantastic so they're going to be doing the broadcasting this year if i'm understanding that correctly uh no we're still going to be the pinberg broadcast is going to be going to be ours there, there's also video game broadcasting that goes on um there was some last year too uh the pinball stuff is still going to stay under Pop okay team. okay all right um, because it's such a big en endeavor, how, how many people actually work for Papa or the Replay Foundation? Actual paid people who are on the payroll would be myself, Elizabeth, Dan, Steve, Fred, and Mark. Six people. Okay. Okay. And then um, there was the, uh, the, the Papa facility, if you will, um, where... It used to be there was there was Pinburg. I started going to Pinburg in 2011. That's when I got into the scene, and uh, there was there was Pinburg, and then there was Papa. The what, what was it called? Papa Championships. The World Championships. Or, Papa, Papa, World Papa World, Championships. Okay, so that went away a couple of years ago because um, you're looking at getting a new facility. But does that old facility still exist, and you have games there? Uh, no, we sold the old building. Okay. It's gone. It went to somebody else. Uh, it basically didn't do what we needed it to do anymore. Um, Pinball and the events that we had run outgrew that facility. I mean, if you were, you probably both were at the Papa 20, and like, there's no parking, there's nothing to do. If you guys were at uh, the last Pinberg we held there when it was 400 people, I yeah. mean, it was nuts. Like, we had sewer backups, and like, the building just is not intended to hold that many people. And once we moved to the convention center, we were only running one event a year there, so it was operating more like a warehouse. And if you've been there, I'm sure you can look up some pictures online. It had these high vaulted ceilings, so the cost to keep it heated and cooled yeah. was just astronomical. So the board basically made the decision, and it was not an easy decision um, because a lot of us have a lot of fond memories about that building. Uh, to basically sell off that building, move somewhere that fits what we're doing right now, and then you know we can reevaluate easier. It, it's it's going to end up saving us a lot of money, um, and hopefully we'll eventually be able to move to a building where we're going to be able to you know host the world championships again and continue to do stuff at our building. Yeah, I think everybody's excited to hear that. I know that. Uh, Papa uh, Pinburg 2011 was my first tournament that I've ever played in and playing pinball. And I was into the hobby for like three months. So that was kind of was like that one, 200 people. I think back then 173, <laughs> if I remember correctly, <laughs> it's a little baby tournament. Yeah. <laughs> tournament. And that seemed, that seemed amazing at the time. Like, uh, that was my first pinball tournament and that was like a make or break moment, right? Like if I walked into this and it, it was terrible, poorly run, other people were just, you know, assholes to be honest. Um, I, I probably wouldn't have pursued pinball, at least competitively, and I wouldn't be here today and doing all the stuff. So you guys did such a fantastic job back then, and um, I'm sorry for folks who listen to this who've never seen the Papa facility. Uh, it was definitely someplace special. Yeah. You guys outgrew it, no doubt, mm -hmm. um, but it, it had a very special vibe, and I l just loved being there like twice a year every year and had, had gone every year. So Looking forward to when you guys find a, a suitable home that can accomplish all the goals that you hope to set out to do. We had uh, a question from the chat. So Joe Cherivino asked if you guys saved the carpet. Uh, I can neither confirm nor deny uh, that some of the carpet may have traveled with us. Um, <laughs> the people that bought the building wanted some of it, like actually left in the building. So, But uh, there, a, a couple roles may have escaped okay. the building. Do you have a sense of when you'd like to be or have a new facility that you guys can call home and have the world championships at? Or like, is there like, oh, we're definitely going to do this by in the next two years or it's just sort of that's There's not the no focus. real firm date. Um, the, the foundation right now is focused on replay effects. Um, replay effects and Pinberg are our two biggest focuses to get the foundation to a point where we no longer need to accept donations or anything and we're self-funded. And then once we get to that point, 
we can look on expanding our facilities or possibly moving to a new building uh, at that point. Okay. Well, well, speaking of which, we're talking about funding. Is is there, if somebody wants to to donate or give to Replay FX, what's the easiest way that they can do that? Uh, you can go to replayfoundation.org, um, and there is a donate link on there, um, and 100 percent of it comes to the uh, comes to the foundation. Uh, the other thing you can do that isn't quite directly a donation, but it's you can come have fun at Replay FX. Like all that money flows into the foundation, and you'll get to come in and enjoy a bunch of video games and pinball games and all that stuff. So like that's that's probably the best thing you can do. Uh, but yeah, we also accept donations, and they're tax deductible because we are a five hundred one c three. So for for the the few people, I mean, everybody's got to know about Replay FX, right? It's amazing what you guys do. I've, I've been going every year. Uh, for those people who don't know, what is Replay FX? What's it like? What can people look forward to, and why should they go? So Replay FX is the greatest arcade in the universe. Um, even if you are not interested in competitive pinball, you have no inkling. You don't, you don't even care about it. Um, set up in the hall at Replay. Uh, we will have over 600 pinball machines. We're going to have over 400 full-size arcade games. There's cosplay contests. There's bands. There's a console section with over 2,000 games to choose from. There's video game competitions. We're going to be doing some eSports stuff this year. There's board games. Uh, basically, if it's gaming... It's probably in the festival. Um, it is, I think the last we heard is it's the third largest uh, convention in Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's something else. I mean, the first time just walking in there and you're, there's kind of like this indoor bridge in, inside oh, and amazing. looking down and seeing all the games set up. And it was even smaller then. And that's hard to believe because you guys take, took over another half of the convention center. Um, yeah, since, since the, the first the one. whole top floor. I think it's over 200,000 square feet at this point. Yeah, it's super cool. I mean, the, the facility itself at the convention center is nice. It's right on the river. Uh, we've gone to uh, baseball games when the stars aligned and they would have it down there. So it's just such a fantastic time. Yeah, it's uh, a great experience. You're right in the heart of Pittsburgh. You can walk and get something to eat at all these cool restaurants. Um, your hotel's walking distance away. So really, it's a, it, I, I consider it a pinball summer camp. Like you go out, you see all your friends. <laughs> You have a great time. Like you get that. away from life like for a little bit. You just have a, uh, it's just a blast. And and if you're able to get into Pinburg, best tournament in the world in my opinion. All right. So let's get to the heart of the matter. People want to know about Pinburg, I'm sure. Uh Pinburg is the I've been saying it for years and I should shut my mouth because it's to my detriment at this <laughs> point. But uh Pinburg is the greatest and best uh pinball tournament uh, I've ever played in and if I could play in one pinball tournament a year it would be Pinburg. It's uh so fun, so well run. Uh, it's hard to replicate because you just cannot do uh, a match play like that. At, at very limited places you can because you need a lot of machines to run it. So, oh, yeah. what 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 does along those lines? What does it take to run Pinberg? Uh, in terms of manpower or in terms of games, everything. Uh, yes. What is it like? <laughs> it takes. How do you do takes, this, Doug? Uh, an unbelievable amount of effort from a lot of people. So Pinberg started, it was the brainchild of Mark Steinman and Bone Cairns in its current format. There were some older Pinberg tournaments um, that weren't match play, but it started, you know, Bowen and Mark. It started at uh, Old Papa headquarters. I think the first one was 125 people um, and did not sell out, if I recall. And then it's just gotten bigger and bigger every year. What and year was the first one? I'm sorry? What year was the first one? Uh, I want to say 20... 2009? Okay. I'm, I should know that, but I don't. Um, I actually played in the first Pinburg. I was not part of Papa at the time. Um, so that had to be before that. It had to be like 2008, 2007, I'm thinking. Um, and it's... So in terms of what it takes, this year, Pinburg will use almost 400 games. Um, I think we're 380 some games. There's 86 banks of four and then 40 backup games, which if you just take a minute to wrap your head around that, 40 backup games is more than I think just about every other tournament in the world has Yeah. Uh, in terms of total games for their event. Uh, in terms of manpower, we have two full-time pinball technicians that work year round uh, to get the games ready for Pinburg and for some of the other stuff we do. Uh, last year we had, 
15, 15 to 20 techs between setup and running Pinberg and the rest of the show. And I think we had 10 tournament directors uh, at any given time on the show floor. And even beyond that, it's, uh, you know, it's the people at the front desk, Elizabeth and her crew and Kevin and them running the front desk. And it's everybody at the convention center and the movers that have to move the games. And, and just the the sheer scope of it all is staggering. I began last year, I began to call myself the uh, director of the Pinberg Logistics Company because a lot of a lot of what goes on is logistics. Yeah. As a, you know, running the tournament is actually the easy part. Well, this is a major. This is major event heart. planning. Major event planning. Yeah. And you guys don't hire like outside event planners. I mean, this is just this organic group of people that came together and kind of you've been scaling up ever since you started running these events. Yeah, I mean, Mark does the Mark does the floor plans uh, every year. The Pinberg side is done in coordination with me. Um, Elizabeth Cromwell has been around longer than all of us. Like she was back in the. You know, uh, the Green Tree Marriott days, which predates just about everybody when Papa was held on the top floor of a hotel in uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, and it's just, we've, and it's all we're learning. We basically learned as we went. Uh, we learn what people like, what people don't like, what works, what doesn't work. You know, sometimes you have to do stuff that people don't like just because it's the best way to move forward. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty much just been an organic growth and, you know, the support of the pinball community has really helped us get to where we're at now. So this, uh, you know, every year Pinberg has been selling out for the past few years. And I, I think this year was probably record timing. You guys went from last year, 840, uh, people playing it to boosting up to a thousand, try to accommodate more people. How are you able to, how, are, how do you determine how many more people you can, let enter into this tournament and and what are some of the challenges in kind of scaling upwards so the biggest bottleneck we have now we have a pretty good system because we started tech classes in pittsburgh so we've actually trained a lot of the techs we have that work in wow. pinberg now yeah uh, which is really nice and then we have some awesome volunteers like uh, jim from the sanctum and uh, gavin from chicago comes in and helps us out uh the games are probably the bottleneck at this point um, there is a there is a collector who loaned us 40 games for Pinberg this year, uh, and that's the reason that we can basically go to a thousand. Wow! Point. Uh, we're working on some other solutions to try and source more games because we'd like to see the tournament continue to grow. Um, we increased it by almost 20 percent this year in terms of the number of tickets, and it sold out in like a fifth of the time it did last year. So. I'm I'm blown away by the fact that when I started in pinball, you know, getting, you know, people to show up for a local tournament, you know, if you got 10 people, you were you were jacked, man. That was awesome. That was such a great turnout. When we did the first Pinberg at the convention center, it was 600 people and we sold the tickets and we looked at it and we're like, "Okay, where do you think this thing is going to cap out?" And I think everyone was in agreement it would probably cap out around 800. Like we can probably add another couple hundred and then, you know, we'll we'll be able to satisfy everybody who wants to get in. And now like the 1000 tickets sold out in officially I think show clicks tells us 11 seconds. Uh, but I think if you didn't click within the first 5 seconds, you didn't even have a chance to buy a ticket like and there are plenty of stories of people who clicked at you know noon exact and you know were denied a ticket so that just that blows me away you know it's it, people say it's a great problem to have it it kind of is and it kind of isn't because I would, I would love believe me i would love to be able to get everybody who wanted to play in pinberg in pinberg uh and now we have to just work on the challenges to make that happen so uh, if i'm hearing you correctly it's it's just lack of machines at this point uh, more than anything else, more than anything I think else. that's that's what would hold us back. Okay, if you guys had the funding, would you be able to purchase more machines in anticipation of of letting more people in 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 following years? Sure, sure. Okay. I mean, the the thing about the convention center too is we're we're only using about I think about sixty percent of their available space because there are like additional halls below the main halls where we're at. So I someday want to hold Pinberg on its own floor. Yeah, I think that would be awesome. <laughs> Take it, the elevator to the Pinberg floor. Exactly. Here's a question from Pinball and Desirables in chat, and it's a question I've heard before. Uh, what is is there any possibility of doing this more than once a year? Doing two Pinbergs in a year? Uh, 
the amount of effort that it takes to put into this makes that extremely difficult. Uh, for example, our techs work year round to get it done. Uh, we also rely on a lot of volunteer effort, especially for setup and teardown at the show. Um, I think we would be pushing our our ability in terms in terms of the ability to get it done in terms of staffing if we did it more than once a year. I wouldn't rule out more than once a year, but there are definitely a lot of challenges. I have to imagine. I mean, when you guys used to have the Papa World Championships and Pinburg. A lot of times people would go to one or the other. And I know Pinburg was starting to become more popular, but I think it, it seems to me that because there's only Pinburg, that's part of the issue. Like if there was the Papa World Championships, some people would be satiated by being able to go to that. But now their one pinball trip, right, when they come out for it is is going to Pinburg because that's really the only option. So the the last Papa we had, Papa 20, um, we actually had more people come to that, like that just walked through the door than came to Pinburg that year. Hmm. I think it was the final gate totals. Um, the Papa world championships is not dead by any means. Um, after we get through replay this year, we're going to examine ways that maybe we can host it. Even if it's not in the building that we own, uh, there are obviously other ways we can put our pins out there. It's just a matter of what the cost will be. Um, you know, and how much that will pull away from our ability to prepare for Pinberg and replay effects. Yeah, so this is uh, this is a it's a really good deal to be able to pay one hundred thirty dollars, and you got to pay hundred dollars again to replay FX on top of the the your Pinberg entry. But still, that's that's pretty damn cheap for what you get for so many days. Have you guys, because of the demand so high, and it, um, you're trying to raise money for the foundation, have you considered raising prices to kind of um, deal with this high demand? So we raised prices this year. Um, the other thing that we're trying to do is obviously to attract sponsors. Somebody like eBay, they, they put a lot of money into the foundation to get their name put on that tournament. So that's obviously great. Uh, the other things are like this year we, we opened up a VIP option. Uh, so the people that wanted to pay more could pay more to get a little bit of a, of a different experience. It's tough because with VI, with the VIP thing is, you know, what, what can you give somebody who's competing in a tournament where everybody gets the same experience, you know? So we did a little lounge, we're doing a, a t-shirt. We might expand that a little bit more next year. Um, there's ways to do it, but we also recognize that the majority of people that play in Pinburg travel. So beyond your expenses for the show, beyond your expenses for the tournament, you're talking about hotels, you're talking about airfare, you're talking about, you know, gas and mileage. We, we don't want to exploit, for, for lack of a better word, we don't want to exploit the player base because, I mean, you get 1,000 people at a pinball tournament. Like, I, I have no doubt that if we charged $500 a ticket, we could sell 400 tickets to Pinburg. Um, but I don't think we want to do that. Um, I know there's some, like, talk about, you know, how, basically, for, for people unfamiliar with this, the way you got a ticket or try to get into to uh, Pinburg. There's a thousand, thousand spots open. I know you guys reserved some for uh, charity to give away. Um, but basically, they, they went on sale last uh, Saturday, and they went at noon, and everyone's sitting by their computer, and they're trying to hit the refresh button, essentially, so that hopefully when they do, and the, the clock turns noon, it says that they can purchase a ticket, and they can purchase up to five. So um, people are saying, I'll do it this way or that way. Why do you guys do it the, the, the current way you're doing it? I know you've put a lot of thought into this, um, and there's going to be no perfect system, but it might be nice for people to hear sort of, sort of why you do it this way. So uh, we changed it a little bit this year with the, how the wait list works, but I won't get into the semantics of that. Um, but we sell tickets as it, we don't want to give priority to any group of players. So every year there's a call for us to like sit aside tickets to make sure the top players can get in. But, uh, and most of the time, as long as you're on the wait list in day one, you usually get an invite at some point to come in the tournament. I don't know if that'll be the case this year or not, but in years past, that's what it's been. Uh, it's genuinely for, I mean, I'm going to say it's the most fair that we could come up with uh, just because if you're online and you're there, like this is the quickest tickets have ever sold out either. 
I mean, last were you year surprised was by that, Doug? Seconds. What's that? Were you get, were you and your team surprised by how quick it sold out? I was stunned. Wow. I was literally stunned. Last year it took about forty seconds to sell out eight hundred and forty people. We expand the field by almost twenty percent, and it sells out in five seconds. Yeah. So, like, our best estimates, you know, amongst ourselves, we say that's oh, going to sell out. I figured like five minutes, honestly, and we would sell out, which would have been good because everybody would have had a chance to get in. Um, but the first come first serve thing, uh, we're looking at other ways to do it. You know, a lot of people suggest like a lottery where, you know, basically if you want tickets, you just say, I want tickets. And then we just draw random names out. Uh, but the, the thing with that is I think doing a lottery, you're just kind of, you're kind of moving around the group of players that isn't going to get it. You know what I mean? Like you're going to get complaints just from the people that didn't get drawn. Right. In the lottery. They're going to say it's fixed. Yeah, you know. it's fixed or, you know, there's a lack of transparency there or whatever. Um, not that that is completely off the table. Listen, I want I want to see about... you pulling a thousand names out of a barrel drum <laughs> for several hours long. You know I want to see all the names go in, too. I want to see them go we, in. We will give we will give exclusive broadcast rights to uh, Bro Do You Talk Pinball. So they you are right. That's right. <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see what a thousand bits might get some people, huh? Eight, eight hours of names going in and <laughs> coming out of, a, uh, yeah. out of a bin. People will watch. People will watch, Doug. Over 14 hours to play every game in Penberg. How long will it take you to draw every name out of Penberg? <laughs> We'll get Steve Bowden to come out and help, too. We're looking at some different solutions. Um, one of the things... And, and I don't know if this will happen or not uh, with our ticketing partner. Uh, Hamilton, the musical, came to Pittsburgh this year on the road. So uh, Elizabeth wanted to get tickets. And one thing that they did that I thought was interesting is, you know, their tickets went on sale, I forget when, but like noon on Saturday. So if you were online on noon and Saturday, they basically put you in a virtual queue. And it was transparent because it told you what number you were in line. Uh, and then they just sold through and over the – you know, the process took a couple hours for them to sell through, but there was, you know, they were here for a month and had two shows a day and all that other stuff. Uh, I kind of like that idea because it's the same thing, except it's a little more transparent. You know where you are in the queue. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if our ticketing partner can do that for us or not. Um, like I said, a lottery is not off the table, but I think that would just kind of shuffle around who's not getting in and who who's going to, you know, complain that the system doesn't work. Yeah. Well, listen, those were the, the questions I had for you. Kim, do you have any? Uh, I have questions from the uh, from our viewers. Let's go. Get to. Are you ready for this? All right. I'm they're, ready. They're really <laughs> hard-hitting questions, so here they come. All right. I think we answered a lot of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, Skip Nate asked a couple. One was about how to donate. We covered that. Um, and how to exp how to grow Penberg. We talked about that. Tilt Tycho wants to know more about the VIP red carpet at Penberg. <laughs> there's, there's no carpet. Uh, I don't think Dan has a VIP ticket. So he used to have a He's VIP. Like, you, uh, can, uh, you can only ask about VIP if you're in the VIP club. Oh, that's exclusive. <laughs> Dan used to have a VIP couch underneath uh, an abandoned trailer, I think, at the Papa facility. Yeah. So uh, it's that, pretty that is VIP. known as Sneedville. Yeah, I've, I've been invited to Sneedville after local uh, <laughs> pinball derelict Rob Sneed. Yeah. I have uh, I have heard like people want to know what the what the what the lounge is going to be like. Can you talk to us about the the VIP lounge? So it's still being planned. Uh, I don't think it's going to be anything extravagant, but I think people will will like it. Um, you know, there's not going to be uh, you know, it's not going to be like gilded chairs or anything like that. Uh, well, listen, but, it's seventy bucks. I want my seventy bucks. If you guys, one, if but. you guys want some inspiration, I check out the Fire Festival. That guy has got some yeah. good ideas on how to sell VIP packages. I saw the documentary on it. I gotta watch that because yeah. I I, yeah. I heard they brought in a lot of money. It'll, <laughs> it'll make you feel really good about the event you put on for sure. Um, all right, Pin Stadium for some reason says, be sure to ask Doug about the new lighting for the machines in the banks. I don't know why he's asking that. He loves that lighting system. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Penn Stadium is a sponsor of our broadcast, and I think yours too. He is. Right? He is. Right? Yes, he is. Uh, so, yeah. So, last year, um, we had Scott brought us a bunch of Penn Stadium lights for the finals game on the bank to light it up a little bit better. Uh, and when we were putting them on, we actually got complaints from players as we were putting them on. Uh, but what they didn't know was that they had created uh, basically a special version of the pin stadiums for us that wouldn't flash and wouldn't do any of the light effects and would actually just provide light on the play field so you could see and the broadcast would be good. And then after almost to a person 
everybody that came up to me and complained about the lights before they actually played on them said that was actually really awesome. So this year, Scott is developing something new for us um, where it's going to be really easy to put them on and off the game without even taking the glass off. Um, and I believe they're going to be selling them to streamers too. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, he's mentioned for it to other me. tournament yeah. people, but we're probably going to have them on all the finals games at Pinburg again. And uh, I really look forward to it because it makes it uh, makes it a lot easier to see on stream, and, and I actually think it makes it a lot easier to play. Yeah, so, so much better than past years. Uh, that lighting kit makes a huge difference. Yeah, we had them at the summer open too, and they look great. All right, what's All right. next on our list of questions, Kevin? <laughs> yeah. uh, from the good Dr. Curly Tuggy, he asks, what is the minimum number of seconds that Pinberg organizers are striving for tickets to sell out? Uh, is there a time scale that could accurately measure such small numbers? Uh, like I said, I wish we could get everyone in. I, 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 and when I say that, I, that's in all honesty and all sincerity. If we had a way to get 1,500 people in Pinberg, we would do it because it's in the best interest of the foundation to sell more tickets to the event. It's just, that's just the way it works. I hate that we have to lock anybody out because of uh, a limited ticketing system, but for now, 1,000 is our capacity, and we're, we will continue to strive to up that number. So, you, guys, you guys are doing a fantastic job, considering that you I mean, just when we did our tournament, we had 130, 40 people, uh, and that's just like mind-blowing to me yeah. yeah you guys do like 10 times that so yep. you had a yacht just, club though well so, we did like, we will hang our head on that <laughs> like i don't know like i saw that and i was like man screw this pinberg nonsense <laughs> convention center yacht club put some uh put some uh pinball machines on the boats down there in the river there you go yeah call the gateway clipper over and bank 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 112 is on the clipper we did legitimately have people think that the tournament was going to be on a boat though. of course they did I mean, <laughs> if it wasn't for weather, that could have happened. Totally <laughs> could have. Could have. Buy a river boat. Yeah. I mean, fix it up. If you'd have been able to do that, like, you know, that's it. That's that's when you drop the mic and you just walk out. We'll do finals on the boat next year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Pimmel on Desire was again asking about um, player expansion. A couple from Steve Daniels. Uh, yes. The biggest challenge going from 840 to 1,000. Um, talked about that. Yeah, talked about that. Uh, so, how. What were your thoughts on, like, so this came up in chat earlier. How fast did the VIP tickets sell out? Uh, the VIP tickets sold out uh, instantaneously. Like, like almost like they sold out quicker than the Pinberg tickets sold out. Uh, that one we expected to go. Like, we, we, we expected that to, to blow out pretty quick, if only just for the reason that they were on sale an hour earlier. We thought a lot of people would try and get them just so they didn't have to be there during the mad pinberg rush and um yeah so they, those were gone like literally when they hit the server they got snatched up all right here's one from steve that we didn't cover so can you talk about the division restriction streamlining for 2019 so no longer using prior results only world rankings so we are using prior results a little bit. It's prior Pinberg results, though, only. Okay. Um, and using the IFPA uh, rankings. IFPA, I mean, it's it's the standard, right? Everybody agrees to that. Like, your IFPA rank is pretty much the standard way that pinball players are ranked. Uh, because we haven't run a Papa World Championships in three years, it seemed weird to continue to restrict people based upon an event that happened three years ago. Uh, the other thing was, as you increase in size, I mean, somebody has to go through and check these players and make sure they're in the correct division. So the more complicated your formula is for determining who should be where, uh, then the more likelihood there is for somebody to make a mistake. And unfortunately, the way Pinberg works, when you come in on day two, you're assigned to your division and the groups are drawn and the divisions are evened out. If we make a mistake, you're stuck in that division. We actually had that happen to a player this year, um, Connor Stowe, super awesome guy. Um, and, and he was bummed about it and it was our mistake. He got a Pinberg ticket out of it this year. So if we miss assign you, we'll give you a Pinberg ticket. <laughs> yeah. um, hopefully that won't happen again. But, you know, it, it was it was a bummer a little bit for him because he had to play in a division he shouldn't have been restricted to because somebody made a mistake looking over a list of 840 people. Yeah, uh, I think it's just easier for everybody to understand, too. You know, you don't have to worry yeah. about all these different 
restrictions. And the other change we're going to make this year is, uh, so we lock you in as of July 1st. So whatever the IFPA rankings are on July 1st is when you're going to know what your restriction is. We're going to post a list of those this year and ask that players look over them. That way, if there's a mistake, they can just say, hey, look, I shouldn't be restricted to B. I should be able to play in C. So there was a question in in chat, and I like this question um, from Infinite. Drac, uh, do you think the improvements in broadcast from Pinberg has helped general interest in pinball? Uh, I would like to think so. Uh, I know that our personal YouTube channel, and we haven't broadcasted in three months because of our move, um, and we're getting electricity installed in. I know that our subscriber numbers have continued to climb. I know that uh, in, in trying to sell the event to other sponsors, uh, Mark and the Knights are using portions of our broadcast from last year. Uh, I think that a lot of what we did is is moving forward. I mean, broadcasting to the audience, I think, was a big deal last year. We took some crap yeah. for it at the time, but I think overall, in the end, you saw the reactions you got from people in the crowd. You got that excitement on the stream near the end because, you know, people who even who were just walking by and weren't interested in Pinberg, I'm just at the show. Well, what's going on over there? There's all these people and there's this yelling and they can walk up and they could see this and hear announcers and see exactly what was going on. So we're hoping to enhance that a little bit more this year uh, and make that presentation a little bit better with the sound system so you can hear it a little bit better um but i I think it does help with um viability i mean you guys know the challenges of streaming pinball um probably more so than you know anybody else as much as you guys do it uh pinball's a niche thing whether people want to acknowledge it or not it's it's a subset in the video game culture uh but I think with the exposure and people really excited to do it, uh, you guys out there constantly pushing it and promoting it, you know, our tournament streams, what Carl does, like, I think all of that can't help but provide more exposure and gain us more credibility. And, you know, hopefully, once again, with like our partnership with the Knights, some pinball people are like, ah, who cares? You're partnering with people that do esports. Well, there's a lot of stuff that they can bring us. There's a lot of exposure. There's a lot of experience in streaming that we can learn from them and make our content better and maybe attract some more people to pinball. And I, I will say personally that the pop up broadcasts and YouTube channel and live streams were absolutely influential in me getting into it, uh, going down there, uh, seeing the tournaments in person, and then being able to watch these games. And uh, I remember just being fascinated with the uh, the level of analysis of like what players were going to do in a tournament and watching them execute that specifically the, the first, uh, Papa or the Papa circuit final that you guys broadcast where, uh, the first one, where yeah. Daniele went from last place to that, winner. That was like, I was on the edge of my seat. Like I was, I had it on at work and then I remember driving home and turning it on and he's still going. I was like, I, this is amazing. So it's we like, we could have written a script better than that. Yeah. To be honest with you. That <laughs> so was good. Pretty, that was pretty phenomenal. <laughs> what? I was like when Kevin says he's got on at work. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my boss. <laughs> he means when he's not on the clock. That's right. It was uh, during lunchtime. Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, going Absolutely. back to Steve's question a little bit more with restrictions. This yeah. is, this is digging into the weeds a little bit. Um, but with restrictions, as far as they are at Pinburg, I think, uh, some people don't think they're restrictive enough. Um, and the reason that they're set up the way they are. So like this year, because we have a thousand players, we have five divisions of play. Uh, one in every five players gets a payout. Number one, which is that's super amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so you at least get your tournament entry money back. Uh, and, each division will be about 200 players. So the top, you know, A division is only restricted to the top 100 because if the top 100 show up, that's half of the spots in A division that are taken. That means only 100 people can play into A division because we have 100 people that are restricted to A division. Uh, The other thing I think that gets lost in the shuffle a lot of times is we'll we'll hear it a bunch on day two, like, you know, ah, you know, Nick Lane is playing in B division. He's not a B division player. Well, you may not think that Nick Lane is a B division player in a smaller size tournament, but in a tournament with a thousand people where, you know, it's a lot of the top players, you know, he may fall into that B division and, and a B division at Papa is not the same as B division at your local tournament. Like it's just not like, it's not the same caliber of player winning B division at Pinburg is exceptionally difficult winning any of the divisions is exceptionally difficult 
and the restrictions are there to make sure that players get kind of divvied up where they should be. But most of the sorting is done by the Pinberg format itself. All right, Kevin. Any, yeah. Anything else from uh? Yeah, we got one from Instagram. It's from at flipping sweet PB. It says no questions. Just wanted to say the kickback is incredible. Thanks. So there you go. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Thank uh, you for that. Thank tell us a little that. bit about uh, kickback before we wrap things up here. Uh, so kickback pinball cafe is on Butler Street in Pittsburgh. Uh, it's a little spot. It was started by a couple um initially and they ran it for a few years and then they decided they wanted to move on from it and they were going to close the business uh i was routing games in their location at the time i had some of the games and me and another partner approached them and said hey do you guys want to do you want to sell the business instead of closing it uh in which where they were very open to that idea um we are just past our second anniversary um, from when we took it over and business is good. It's a, it's a great fun little spot. Um, a lot of people ask why we don't have, uh, beer or liquor there. Uh, we kind of view it as a, as a family friendly place. You can be YOB, but like, we didn't really want the bar atmosphere. We wanted more of like an, an old school arcade kind of atmosphere, which is why it uh, is done that the artwork in the location is done by Brian Holderman. Uh, the walls and floor are covered with artwork to look like a pinball machine. Um, Brian Holderman now does artwork for Stern and a bunch of other tournaments, but he does some really great stuff. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, our Stephanie, uh, our general manager there, Stephanie, is absolutely fantastic. So give her a shout out. She basically runs the day to day operations there, and um, she's really the motor that keeps the place going. Will you be running a tournament there the Wednesday before Pinburg again? Uh, I won't be, but somebody else will be. <laughs> okay, there I will mean, be I one would, there. I'm willing to run a thousand person tournament. I'm not wading into that madness. <laughs> I meant the royal you, not you <laughs> in specific. <laughs> there will be. The, there will probably most likely be a couple tournaments around Pittsburgh the day before, uh, just like last year. Um, I'm sure there'll be a pin golf tournament. There'll be the knockout tournament at Kickback, and maybe even another event or two that. Or yet to be announced. You got a tournament before you tournament. You know what I'm saying? That's what pinball people you got, do. You got a pregame, man. You got a pre <laughs> and, then, and then after you play in the thousand person tournament, then you can play in the 500 person tournament. The finals are on set on Sunday. There so. you go. The intergalactic and the women's international pinball tournament as well, right? Whipped is happening again this year. We're really excited about that. Uh, unbelievable reception for that last year. Uh, and tickets go on sale in March. Um, there's some changes, which I'm not allowed to announce, but there's some cool stuff going on this year. So that'll be really exciting. Kate Martin out in New York is the, uh, head tournament director there, but, uh, that, that'll be a really cool event as well. Awesome. Right. Very good. Thanks for joining us, Doug. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate uh, having the chance to answer everybody's questions. All right. We'll see uh, you. If anybody wants to reach out to me directly, you can just email me at Doug at Papa.org. Excellent. Awesome. We'll, we'll see you in uh, in a couple months. We'll see you guys. Have a good one. All right. Thanks. Take care. Dude. Awesome. So that was that was that was nice. That was insightful. You know, I I met Doug. I think officially when I I went down to the 2012 uh, Pittsburgh Pinball Open, and this is again when like nobody was competing in Buffalo. So I'm just traveling these tournaments by myself, yeah. and he's one of the first people I met down there because he was running that, and uh, just absolutely super nice to me. Um, and he's been supportive of us ever since, and he does. Uh, such a good job running that, and and he's such a good ambassador for uh, pinball. So he's the best. He is. That's what I'm trying to say. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin went with the brevity, and I, I I appreciate that. I like to cut to the chase. There you go. All right. All right. Well, we got some uh, news and updates to do, so it's good that Kevin can come to the chase. Let's uh let's let's unroll this. All right. But first, let's get our let's get our raffle going. Type oh, exclamation point raffle in chat to get in to win a full set of pin stadium lights for your pinball machine. We're gonna uh, draw it at the end of the show, but. The whole second half of the show here, you're going to be able to enter. So exclamation point raffle. We'll get you in, uh, and then uh, we'll draw at the end of the show. Wildcat, we've already done a tournament. They're talking about doing a tournament with, uh, um, with the worst games games from 200 to 3. We've, we've done that. Like, we did that like tournament two pioneers, years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, yeah. so over that. We did it hashtag first. Hashtag tournament first. hipsters. <laughs> first best tournament right here. All right. All right. So, all right, let's get into news. The uh, So, we played the Munsters finally. We did. So, let's we I got it we on location. Give our, our Munsters first impressions, the hot take. Yeah, well, we're getting behind on reviews because, I mean, first of all, we've not reviewed Deadpool, nope. and that's been out since, God, late summer. Uh, so, we'll yep. have to we'll work on that in between maybe now and, and uh, the next uh, 
road even talk pinball, which will be the end of March after we've gone to Texas pinball. So we'll spend a lot of time on that. To be we'll fair, though, down. we have put that in the, uh, the options, and it's just not getting. Picked. It's true. We put in the options in the Discord fault. and Patreon, so we were willing to do it. Now they've updated the code again, so. They really got lucky with this. I'm just saying we didn't review when it first came out. Okay, so Monster's First Impressions, what do you think, Evan? Well, I played it Monday for the first yeah. time at our uh, right before our uh, monthly tournament at Community Beer Works. The first game, I, so I put three credits on it because two, three credits for two bucks, put the two bucks in. First game, I got Monster Ma- Madness. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, you guys have a ball save on there. It took me it took me uh, two games to do that, but yeah. Okay, so you got a fifteen second ball save. I saw the what the one of the ops put on there. It's pretty bad. Fine, but it's for get <laughs> less people again. That's making the, money. That's the standard for that location. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was just like, okay. I mean, the shots felt great. Uh, it played on the easy side. I would say, like, it was very friendly. Um, I didn't feel it was giving me a lot of cheap drains or anything like that. Shots are smooth and good. Uh, it took me a little bit. The, the middle area where Herman is, and then there's like that little kitty stand-up yeah, char- target. Yeah. That's kind of weird. Like some yeah. of those are tough to hit, but the main like orbits and ramps are, are nice and easy to hit. And uh, it's got the little, I, it it's, feels like a mix between uh, Medieval Madness and Monster Bash to me because it's got the little like like loopy shot on the left that's kind of like the, the catapult on Medieval Madness. Okay. But then it's also got more of a Monster Bash feel to it. Um, with the the scoop where it is and the, the rest of the shots, um, I left kind of like it's it's a pinball machine. It's very it's, it's early. A pin, it's, it's a pinball it's machine. A pinball. <laughs> Kevin's Kevin's review. They could put that on the quotes it's, for them. The flyer. Yeah. It's a pinball machine. You can put that on your flyer. What the fuck do you people want? It's a pinball <laughs> machine. I'm just like doing this. Like eh. nah. <laughs> that's how I felt. Yeah, that's how I felt. It was like okay, yeah. okay. It's a pinball machine. What do you think? Uh, you know what? Uh, the the chat's been kind of unanimously saying this um underwhelming i think that's a good way to put it mm-hmm. i played it uh, a couple weeks ago and i played a couple games i got to monster madness or whatever the wizard wizard mode before the wizard mode uh my second game and then it's just like okay do it again do everything again you're just like really mm-hmm. is this it so you got a, a layout that's uninteresting it's a lot like so many other layouts that john borg has done um it's a theme that is based off a 50 plus year old TV show that was on for two seasons or two years uh, really does nothing for me, unfortunately. And the rules seem pretty basic. And it looks like it's trying to be a poor man's, I mean, that's not fair, but an answer to Monster Bash. I mean, really so. Like, they probably wouldn't deny it. It's not like they're trying to hide it or anything. It's like a knockoff of it, an homage, whatever you want to view it as. Um, the layout's similar to it. The colors are similar to it. Um, it's just got that vibe, even the art. When you hit the left and right orbits, it makes that like howling wolfman sound. Some of the music of it is sounds like Monster Bash-esque. So my thought was, why not just get a Monster Bash or play Monster Bash? Because that seems to be the superior game of the two. Um, so that's what I'm thinking of it. And also, I was thinking today, you know, I, I was there collecting, and I had just—I saw it on Monday when we had our tournament there. I didn't play it. I was collecting. I could have played it today. I just have no desire to play it, and that's not good. I'm worried that sort of like I—I I, I played video games all my life, just like you, Kev. Mm-hmm. And you know, over the years in the 2000s and, and maybe onward, video games play played less and less of a role in my life because they just started making the same game over again. Like, how many Call of Duties can you make, and and mm-hmm. blah blah blah, right? And that's sort of how I feel about this pinball machine. It's like I, I've been there, done that. I'm, I'm bored by it. Like mm-hmm. it's just not interesting. And probably, you know, I've been in the hobby, been playing a ton of pinball, so it takes more to kind of um, certainly impress me and probably you as well. Yep. But that's the feeling, man. It's like, oh man, I I don't want to get there where it's just like every game seems to be the same. It's not being innovative. That's why I've been harping on pirates because it, it is that like, oh my god, this is something new. This is fantastic. We're innovating. And Monsters doesn't seem like that. So we're probably going to repeat all this when we say it in our uh, official review in, the, in a month or so. But we'll certainly play it more. We'll play it again. We'll become more familiar. And we'll try to give it a, a, a fair shake. Yeah, hopefully they'll do some code updates. They kind of flesh it out a little bit. I, they, they've done a good job with that with uh, Deadpool, I feel like. And um, Guardians of the Galaxy also started out real basic and simple. So hopefully they'll expand more. But what was Dwight's last game was Ghostbusters, wasn't it? Or no, uh, Star Wars. Yeah. And so thankfully it's not multiply like you know you're doing math and hitting buttons yeah, times, so that's good it, it seems like but it seems like dwight is 
he doesn't do a lot to change the game once it's out. Mm. Like Ghostbusters hit change point. a lot. Yeah. Star Wars didn't change a ton. Neither did Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, he'll polish it up, but I don't know. Hood, save your money for now on that Wait, one. See. Yeah. The artwork's great, though. I, I, it's that a great work is, is really good looking game. Really it's good-looking very game. dark, though. It is the game. Like you can see that thing that pop up pops up on the left ramp. It. Yeah, uh, we're we're giving away too much of the interview. <laughs> uh, the the review. Start. Let's move on. So if you if you win the pin stadiums tonight, and put them in your monsters. Oh my god! Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> if you if you buy a monsters, I mean, yeah. All right. <laughs> and if you have one, all right, whatever. <laughs> all right. So uh, I I reached out to Jerry Jerry Stellenberg. It's his birthday today. Happy happy birthday, Jerry all from right, Multimorbid. I said. Uh, we're doing the podcast and I got anything you want to share and he sent me a whole bunch of stuff. So, uh, first is there's, he said there's new Lexi light speed code. It's out. It adds dynamic content to the back box display. So they added screen in the back box. Mm-hmm. This adds uh, dynamic content, scoring modes, all that cool. stuff. Uh, so people standing around the machine can see the player's progress on the score. Big, big plus there. He says cosmic cart racing at Texas pinball festival. They're going to have four of them set up network so you can all play against each other. Really? Yeah. Like NBA, like racing each other in the pinball machine, like for like you know how so like an NBA fast break you can link them together. They're yep. linked four games four linked. Four games linked. That's pretty damn he cool. Said, Industry first, dude. That guy is is super creative. Yeah, <laughs> talking so, about innovative. He's like light years ahead of like every what everybody else is doing. Yeah, Very so I'm, cool. I'm really looking forward to to trying that out. That'll be amazing. Um, he also said it, it, with Cosmic Art Racing, he says the last of the pre ordered Cosmic Art Racings are on the line now. So. They'll be back to build, basically building on demand after that. Um, he also said they have they'll be showing off a new game at Texas Pinball Festival. Uh, a hobbyist developed it, and they're going to be giving it out for free. He said, "Who else does that? Gives out free content for their pinball machines." No one, nobody. Um, if you consider though that putting code actually in a pinball machine and giving it out after it ships, maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> depends <laughs> on your perspective. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Shots fired. Um, he says, eight more days left. You can get a thousand dollars off a P3 if you want to pick it up at Texas. They'll use it on the floor, and then you can take it home. And also, they're selling sh- sheets of playfield glass at Texas Pinball for twenty five bucks each. You can pick it up there. There's this nice. Uh, uh, it's got like a nice rounded edge on it. I noticed when I had the the loaner oh, okay. P3. So the the sides that slide into the the channels mm-hmm. are nice and rounded. So cool. if you want some standard glass. Uh, it's a great way to grab it, and you can save a bunch on shipping because shipping glass is expensive. Mm-hmm. All right, that's your multimorphic update. All right, um, next up, I want we haven't talked about this. So I was curious your take on it. What do you think about gambling on pinball? It's official now. Sure, I mean, pro circuit. I mean, I'm not into gambling or anything like that, but sure, why not? I don't. People bet on tons of things. I want to. I, I suggested years ago that. Bunch of my buddies get drunk and go to a little league games and bet on those. They really get into it, you know. Like, <laughs> come on, yeah, just up or like you know, five, uh, five, eight dudes just going nuts, throwing their like newspapers <laughs> down when like somebody doesn't score or somebody gets struck out. That's exciting. Come on, kid. Yeah, it's really cheap entertainment too. Anyways, you guys can have that idea. So it's uh, the website is mybookie.ag if you want to throw some money away. Um, the I, I know nothing about gambling, but uh, the person at the top is Raymond Davidson, so I assume he's got the best. Uh, he's they assume he's most likely to win. Oh, that's cool. And well, the, it, it brings visi- it brings more engagement and visibility to um, pinball, and I mean gambling is, is accepted. You, we have how many casinos in Buffalo? We have that and uh, over Niagara Falls. Yeah, who cares? I can gamble Fantastic. on Bitcoin all day if I want, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, it's cool. Uh, and what do you what do you think about the? Because pinball had the perception of being uh, a game of gambling to begin with. Where's we, Jay Fairbrother, though? <laughs> I don't see him on there. <laughs> it's weird. He's He'd not be there. a millionaire if you bet on him hey, and he me, won. Let me scroll to the bottom. <laughs> just, no, he's not on there. That's really weird. Oh, that's bullshit. Not even at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is for the circuit finals. That's why he didn't make this. It's for the circuit. Oh, it's the circuit finals. Yeah. All right. Um, but what do you think of the the perception that we just got over pinball being this gambling thing and it was illegal and now it's legal and we we fought that battle and won and now this might be steering us back towards that? No, no, no. they're not gonna like like the mayor of Buffalo's not gonna come and like start throwing pinball machines into the uh, Niagara River. <laughs> Byron uh, Brown's gonna bring his sledgehammer yeah. and it's not gonna happen. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Yeah. What about the? There's uh, horse racing. We're not like banning horses. Like I don't, I don't understand. What, what about like somebody feeling bad about themselves because their odds are worse than somebody else? Play better. <laughs> you're lucky you're on that thing. <laughs> exactly. I don't see mine or Kevin's yeah, name. I'm not on Jesus. That. <laughs> Stop being a baby. <laughs> don't be. Hashtag don't be a baby. Yeah. All right. You heard it here. All right. 
Uh, so there you go. You can uh, throw your money away if you want. It's pinball on ESPN, the Ocho. So pinball, it's so for years no longer a joke. The, yeah, uh, is pinball going to be on ESPN? They do darts and cornhole and all this stuff. Why isn't pinball on there? Mm. It's happening, but it's happening. And so they're coming to the circuit finals, and they're going to shoot a prepackaged thing. It's not going to be live coverage of the circuit finals. They're yeah. going to come. They're going to cover it. They're probably going to tell some stories. Could. It'll, pr- it'll probably end up being like a five-minute segment on this. Take it. This uh, the Ocho, which is yeah. a uh, kind of like where they highlight all these weird niche sports, um, and so it'll be on there. It's a step in the right direction, man. Yeah. That's that's fantastic. These um, are all good. We're we're moving in the right direction with pinball, no doubt. Here's what here's what the story says. Uh, uh, Stern's Pro Circuit Champion is going to be held March 9th at the Bottom Bar Lounge in Chicago. They're selling tickets if you want to go watch. Um, it's scheduled to be featured on the half hour show, the Ocho, the national sports networks, one day owed to fringe sports said Zach Sharp, Stern director of marketing. So it's a half hour show and they're going to spend, they're going to share time with other weird sports. So it'll be a small little tiny thing, but, but we'll be in there finally. Yeah. Yay. Weird sports, weird sports. That's us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't All pretend right. you're not involved in a weird sport. Come on. All right. N- Nick, I have support I, nonetheless though. <laughs> yeah. I have, I, I have an announcement. I have. I don't want to brag, but I have something I want to tell you. Okay. I'm ready. I'm a Stern insider. What, what does that mean? You paid money to Stern? I gave them $30 to get access to all things Stern. What is the fuck? That, you're just curious as to what that means. <laughs> you well, they to, got you. It worked on you. Yeah. Well, I'm doing it for science. I'm doing yeah. it for the people. Well, you can't tell people. Don't you sign like a non-disclosure there's, cause? There's no non-disclosure. All right. Let's piss them off more. Let's right. go. So <laughs> I, I paid the 30 bucks. So apparently you get... A shirt, access to all things Stern. They're gonna send you a shirt. Or you get the privilege of buying that shirt. Uh, they're gonna send me a shirt. There's, there, there's. Here, let me pull up the list of things. Aaron Pinball Insider. Uh, Jesus, come! If you want to waste money, here we go. <laughs> I just wanna, I just wanna feel superior to everybody else. Really. All right. Well, I'm an insider. You are not. So here's yeah. what they say. They, I can say I know an insider. That's right. They have the basic plan. Which is you give them the the market to you for free, right? Okay, yes, (laughs) all right. You join their mailing list. This is good stuff. No charge. This is good stuff. It's good. They're gonna make money off this. So for Stern Insider All Access, uh, it's twenty nine ninety nine a year. Uh, Second bullet is access to everything Stern. God, it's like a a sponsorship thing. I wrote. (laughs) I would have if somebody came back to me. I'd be like, "What does this mean?" Like. (laughs) You need to like spell this out. No, everything. It means I get everything. I get yeah. to go hang out with Gary Stern, <laughs> go, uh, George Gomez. Well, I get his office. Yeah. I've got my pass. It says everything. I've got my thirty dollars. Everything. All, All right. right. All right. Uh, Zach Sharp and I are going to hang out. It's going to be great. Um, not anymore. <laughs> Why not? You're trashing I'm, his program. No, I'm, I'm an. I paid thirty bucks. I'm an okay. insider. You just went high pitched. <laughs> I did. Uh, Stern Insider All Access merchandise box, including exclusive T-shirt and more. But what's the and more? Exactly. Uh, I, I gotta find out. Where's my wallet? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> um, All right. Early access to the newest games. What does that mean? How are you gonna get early access to the newest games? Maybe they're gonna pay for me to fly out and play uh, prototype games. I mean, it says everything. If they let you in there to play the games for anybody else, I guess that could be a potentially cool perk. But it only helps you if you're gonna be in the area, right? Or you live in the area, right? Or they fly me out for my thirty bucks. Right. Um, first dibs on limited edition merch and giveaway. So oh, you, get, you can buy their shirts before anybody else buys their shirts. I get the chance to spend more money yes. before everybody else. Yeah. And last but not least, access to Stern Insider only events around the world. They're coming to Buffalo. I know it doesn't specify anything. Yeah, it looks. I, I said sponsorships, and if somebody put that in front of me as like this is what we want to give away, like what does this mean? Mm-hmm. Okay, right. so I Kevin's gonna figure today, it out. I did it for the people. He's inside yeah. investigator story. So I, I I went in. I I paid my thirty bucks. Um, I set a username and password. It's behind a password protected site, and it pops me in here, and it's like first thing you see is exclusive Munsters T-shirt available only at the Texas Pinball Festival. So. There's a there's a monster shirt. Yeah, he'd be but, the talk of the town with that shirt. Yeah, um, so <laughs> I can spend some more money there, and then but you get the shirt for free, right? I don't think that's the one I get for free. You get to buy it before anybody else. I think this is one of the. It doesn't you can say, have my. Sp- I'm not gonna fight you for that. It doesn't say. It just says it's a shirt okay. available. It doesn't say if this is the, right. the free one or you, if you have to pay for it. Um, and then there, but beneath that, there's two exclusive interviews, which I have an issue with because these were. Interviews that were previously Facebook Live videos that are now on YouTube as unlisted videos. Come on, guys. 
and one with George Gomez, one with Steve. That's Ritchie. bullshit. Like, George Gomez from tw- December 2018 that you could have watched on Facebook, and one from December 2017 that you could have watched. So they're like sort of out of date, right? Um, so I get it. It's new. Uh, they probably just have this as placeholder content. But I paid my thirty bucks, and this is what this is what I get. All right. right so now. we've got our uh, pinball and desires. Bulls wants to know about our Buffalo Pinball Insider <laughs> program. So we're going to give you Jay's uh, personal cell phone number and call him at all hours of the day. His, his address, you can go play Game of Thrones. Well, with. that's a higher level. This <laughs> they got to pay a little bit more for his address. We'll give it to you, though. Okay. So uh, there you go. So th- I hear they're also going to be doing like monthly giveaways. So um, actually, Steve Daniels, a link to This Week in Pinball if you want to get more <laughs> priority access to the purple toilet. <laughs> 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 if you don't know what that's about, it's a Jay Fair brother. You got to watch the show. Got to watch the show, folks. I have a clip. It's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, go to This Week in Pinball. Uh, Zach Sharp did an interview with um, Jeff at This Week in Pinball. It went up today, and uh, he talks more oh. about the specifics of the, the Stern Insider program. But it it sounds like they're to, to you know we were poking fun at it, whatever. But we're honestly, having a, we're having a laugh. Yeah, we're having we're having a little. We're joshing you. We're having yeah. a little bit. Um, oh. <laughs> It doesn't work with Zach. It, it if it was happen. Josh, we can say Zach. just Joshin. Just Zach and you? It doesn't. No. Nah, it's not quite we're gonna, we were going to have a segment on the show called Just Joshin with Josh Sharp. <laughs> he would come on. He doesn't know about this. He would come on and say something like, well, uh, IFPA next year is going to charge like $20 per player for the year. And so people get an uproar. And then he'll say, Just Joshin. And then we'll cut away. <laughs> I'll get through with all our good ideas today. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. Um, Gambling at Little League events. Just Joshin with Josh Sharp. But, you know. To be fair, this is very equivalent to any other, like, you know, like, uh, Harley Davidson does something like this. Or yeah. Any, I'm sure they make money, dude, yeah. and that's what it's about. So, people who are passionate, like, you know, Iron Maiden, all bands, uh, I, I heard, um, uh, head to head pinball, or no, uh, coast to coast pinball was talking about, uh, he's a, he's a member of the, uh, the Pearl Jam fan club. Jay Fair, if Jay Fair Brothers is a member of the Dave Matthews band fair, fan club. So yeah. you spend thirty bucks a year, you get little perks and things like that, early access to whatever. Yeah, so it's pretty. It's pretty it's industry standard stuff. So um, Stern's kind of moving in that direction a yes. little bit too. So I was One, just, I was really curious, and I knew we could we could talk about it on the show. So I wanted really to really walking back those uh, those jokes. All right, <laughs> I, wanted the, <laughs> I wanted the inside scoop, and now I got it. Well, pretty you know nice. what? If Stern and Stern crushes it, because you'll know now. Yep. And then maybe next year I'm sitting around and be like, man, I wish I had spent thirty bucks because I've got how many? St- I've got a bunch of Stern machines in my collection. So Lord knows I like Stern games. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the uh, the ground level Stern insider, and you're not. Sorry. Okay. Day one. Day one insider. Congratulations, Kevin Manny. That's me. I did it. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Color DMD has a DMD coming for Big Bang Bar. No, it's not for Big Buck Hunters, so let's move on. Big something else. Yep. And it's the first Capcom game, so that's noteworthy. Uh, mm-hmm. Probably the most... I don't... Which which Capcom game do they make the most of? Maybe Airborne? I don't know. I don't really know no, anything uh, about it. I don't they know. They didn't make a lot. They didn't make a lot Pinball of Airborne. Magic, Airborne. Was I, that it? I couldn't... Um, break Shot. Break Shot. Oh, maybe Break Shot might have the most. Maybe. I've seen more break shot than any of the other yeah. games. Yeah, I think you're probably but right. We'll see. Um, and that's it for news. Let's get into game room updates and game room slash updates. Okay. So the first thing I listed here was that we had Spectrum News come to your game room. That's right. So Spectrum News, the uh, company that drops out Kevin's internet. Yeah, all every the frames. Day. Yeah, <laughs> all the frames lost. We should have asked them. We should turn the interview on them. I was very tempted. Bring out our own ki- equipment. <laughs> Let's ask you a question. Yeah. Live. Where's <laughs> all Kevin's frames that he lost? What's up with the frames? The people yeah. on Twitch won't stop asking me about yeah. them. <laughs> we got like a dozen people upset. Yeah, they're really mad. <laughs> yeah. Really mad. Um, yeah, so that came about after our January charity tournament at Community Beer Works. We got a bunch of media coverage because it's magic. And mm-hmm. It just happens. It just happens. You have an event. Or Kevin knows what he's doing. Or, uh, yeah. And he's in PR. Um, all right. So they uh, heard about that. She wanted to come out and do a story about Buffalo Pinball and the, the charitable things we do. She, that was uh, her angle on the story. This was it, a good story, though. Yeah, she did a really good job. She didn't call us wizards. Um, I think it was in the online. Oh, story. really? Yeah. She didn't say it. Oh, it was in the, the tweet, I think. All okay, right. She didn't say it in the interview. Yeah. She didn't ask any of the, the kind of the stupid the cliche stuff. trope. Yeah. Qu- like, none of the stupid questions mm-hmm. that we got. They were pretty good questions for somebody interested in pinball. Mm-hmm. And she seemed to generally have a good time playing it. So. Yep. I think it was a, for dedicating four hours from 5 a.m. Well, you, I mean, 
you got up before then you had to travel to my house took a shower came From over like 5 a.m to 9 a.m we were just captive in my basement doing that and doing a live stream so but it was it was fun it was good yeah it was a great opportunity and uh nick kaiser was with us i think he's in chat tonight um yeah so the story's online spectrum news com. i think it is yeah or if you go on our, our twitter or youtube or twitter or facebook page uh, i link the story there but it's pretty cool um Second thing that we're both doing is we're going to Texas pretty soon. What are you, what are you looking forward to most in Texas? Texas Pinball Festival specifically. Um, I don't know. No? I'm looking forward to a, a kind of getaway of yeah. going and playing, playing pinball. Like I've, it's been a while since we've, we've gone anything. Last time it was the, the Cleveland show, yeah. right? Yeah. So that was fun. I'm looking forward to seeing certain people that you really only see a couple times a year. And we're not playing in the main tournament, which is... I think honestly a blessing because this is, you know, where you fly down on Friday and then we come back on Sunday. So that's like no time at all. And we're just going to be standing in line for a tournament. We can just go and have some fun. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I need because, you know, Pinburg's going to be serious, right? And there's other, plenty of serious tournaments that we run. This is just, we'll go down. I heard nothing but good things about the quality of the games. See some of our, our uh, sponsors, see some of our uh, friends in the hobby. That's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, same here. It's uh, I want to I want to play all the uh, the real high level collector games that they get. I I hear the the pinball scene down there like the people really take pride in their their games and their restoration. So I want to yeah. I want to I want to check those all 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 out. Um, I want to see. I, I always like walking around playing weird games that we've never played before. So hopefully we can do some of that. Do some dollar game kind of stuff. Dollar and, games, um, gambling. That's gambling. <laughs> hashtag gambling. Uh, just the two of us on a private plane. No, unfortunately not. Uh, we will be uh flying out, coach. Is it with a direct flight at least? Uh, yes. I'll yes, be uh, I'll flight. be the one with the VR headset on my head. Nick will have the being super weird mm-hmm. off the bat. Nick will be in in first first uh, first class in his in his brain. <laughs> and my goggles will be in first class. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't matter what reality That's is right. as long as you believe. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm yeah just looking forward to going casually playing it. Finally, being able to being able to check out Texas, which I've heard nothing but great things about. If I'm being honest, is to play Thunderbirds finally. You haven't played Thunderbirds? You didn't play it at replay last year? Nope. No. Nope. nope. Wow. Oh. Make sure I'm there when you play it the first time. Okay. I, I want to be there. All maybe, right. Get the hot we'll, take. Maybe we'll stream it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, all right. For my game room updates, uh, <laughs> I got some repairs. Um, I got, so League Night, my drop targets on Swords of Fury started being dumb. So I'm going to mm-hmm. have to rebuild them again. Dumb targets. Dumb targets. Because they, they just get hammered they, in that game. You plunge to the upper play field, you just start hammering on the, mm-hmm. on the, on the drop targets. I had uh, I'd rebuilt them completely when I got the game a couple years ago. And I haven't played it a lot, but I played it a decent amount. And here we go again. So that'll be take two on that. The other thing that happened was I was streaming Doctor Who last Monday. And the mini play field stopped coming up. So that was fun. So I'm going to have to track down what the problem is on that. I think it's a power issue. So back to square one on that. At least that, that made it through League Night, thankfully. The game that didn't make it through League Night was Stars. That died. Uh, that's not my Stars, but um, Ryan's supposed to be coming to pick that up. But, you know, it's the ju- pinball machines are great until you let somebody else play them and then they fall apart. That's what I right. learned. That's right. <laughs> um what else is happening? Uh, I got a, a Manny Cave sign. It's not. A, it's over there. It's pretty sweet for my birthday. Yeah. Uh, what does uh, it say, Kevin? It says, uh, Top ranked pinball runner. Let me go get it for this. Yeah, show. go get it for them. <laughs> this is where ben- uh, the benefit is watching this either in video or live. So, uh, for Kevin's birthday, Martha and I got Kevin a sign for his game room. It says Kevin's Manny Cave. Uh huh. See what we did there? Mm-hmm. And then underneath it says Top ranked pinball runner. There you go. They don't just make that for anybody. They don't. That's it. So where, where does one go to get something like this? Uh, if somebody wants to ruin their own man cave uh, or arcade or whatever. You just find a place that makes a, a signage, and they'll make a <laughs> pinball manny cave sign for you. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Everybody should get that specific sign. <laughs> yeah. You get that sign yeah. for your game room. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell's Kevin? <laughs> your name's know. Kevin. It works out. <laughs> Last name, not so much, but yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's it's on the sign. It's official. All right. Um, what else? Oh, uh, so the other thing I've been doing is is playing with uh, pirates. I got my Cliffy protectors on it the other day. Um, what else? I got Jack the Monkey's on there. We yeah. talked about him. You can't mm-hmm. talk about him enough. Uh, what else did I put out there? The uh, the cannon mod from uh, the mod couple, and also the pop bumper caps. So it's got yeah, it looks uh, good. Two of the pop bumpers have like 3D molded things on them on the LE. 
one's got the spinning pirate guy and the other one's got like a, a barrel that spins around the other two are just flat plastic so these are cool because they they turn it into like three 3d printed 3d molded pieces like the other two so it's a it's a nice match nice upgrade nice so that's it for game room updates for me how about you Let's see what i got uh i got my what is it fireball two? Oh yeah fix that's nice. up and running and i hosted league night and everything worked out fine um then I noticed like the trap door on, on dialed in is a little wonky, so I got to fix that. But I, th- I think there's enough documentation out there on how to work on that. So Yeah. It should got, just be a matter of bending a tab from what I understand. I hope so. I haven't had to do it. Yeah. I had, to, I had to fix it originally and bent it, and now it's, a little, it's just like, I don't know. But that'll get worked on. I'm hosting like a coin-op collector's night, so I've got to get that working, and then hopefully I get that working by then. And then other than that, I've been uh, on a kick like doing other stuff. I've been upgrading like my home theater setup. Right, so I've been putting speakers on top of speakers for Atmos. <laughs> I bought a subwoofer that didn't. That, I shouldn't say okay. anything. <laughs> if somebody wants to buy a really nice subwoofer, you get in touch with me, and I, we, can, we can make it happen. Yeah, it's yeah. like an SVS subwoofer, okay? But I'll give you a good deal on it. <laughs> and then I got another one that came in the mail. It was like 88 pounds. So <laughs> I'm going a little. I'm going a little crazy. Yeah. But that's Nick. like I focus on something, and I just like really go after it. Uh, and then I've been playing a lot of Overwatch because I'm addicted to that on uh, Xbox. So if you guys play Overwatch on Xbox, hit me up, and you can really get the full experience of me yelling at people and <laughs> making sure people aren't kids that I'm playing against or with on my team. So are you over uh, VR? Is that it? You're all into uh, home theater now? <laughs> no, I I play VR several times a week. Okay, uh, I, I was worried, but I but it cut back into my. I, I'm balancing out all these like hobbies. <laughs> So Overwatch many. has stolen a lot of my time from VR, unfortunately. So, can we run through the hobbies? Uh, Overwatch, you know, video games, yeah, VR, VR, home theater, home theater, painting dolls. I haven't painted dolls this this for like uh, almost a year. It's been a while, wow. within a year. Okay, I don't have time, Kevin. No, no time to paint dolls. Pin, pinball, uh, pinball, R- running and ruining pinball. Yes, that takes a lot of time. Um, board games too. Board games. I, I I board game a couple okay. times a month. Board gaming on Sunday and so. drive driving the Miata. That's your other hobby. Driving the Miata in, in the summertime. Driving so. the go kart. Is there anything else? Uh, yacht rock. Um, I think that's it. I'm very busy man. <laughs> And when you don't have kids, you got to fill your life up with a lot of other stuff. It's not easy. All right. All right. Someone's got to do it. All right. So, okay. So before we close things up. No, RLM. No. <laughs> uh, exclamation point raffle to get in and uh, to the raffle to win a full complete set of pin stadium lights. We will pull it after we wrap up the show. So if you want, you can follow us on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, you, we're Buffalo Pinball on all those things. Please give us a follow. Uh, you can email us for future shows if you got questions or feedback. Talkpinball at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Buffalo Pinball. If you're watching live, that's where you are right now. Uh, if you're listening to us on the podcast and you want to see our lovely faces, you can you can do that and you can watch live. Um, and also we stream. We have a whole team of streamers. We have Skip Natty, Rudy Soup, Mixer Tuna, us, us. Jay Fairbrother. Uh, he occasionally shows up on the stream. Yeah, he does. Um, but yeah, all week long we stream live pinball. Uh, you can check us out there. And uh, you can also sub to us there uh, if you want to support the show. Uh, it's $5 a month. Or if you have Twitch Prime, you can get a free sub uh, for that if you choose to use it on us. And last but not least, the Patreon. I'll let you do the honors Patreon, on that. Uh, so some folks requested uh, other avenues to donate to us. Go to patreon.com slash buffalo pinball give anything from one to five to ten or a thousand dollars a month we'll take it all thank you all right so we have 27 total entrance into the uh pin stadium raffle this is exciting it is wambulance whoa wambulance congratulations that's pretty damn good thank you to pin stadium for the very generous donation he's been a fantastic supporter of us fantastic sponsor All right, so uh, thanks for watching, and until next time, keep playing pinball. Yeah, do that. We don't don't have, like, a thing. No. We don't have a thing. We don't need a thing. We should get a thing. All right, bye, guys. Bye.